Banes are known not only for the corrupting influence they bring, but also for their disturbing ability to possess humans and sometimes animals, transforming these unfortunate hosts into creatures called Fomori, mockeries of the changing breeds who are born half spirit and half flesh. These Fomori, as we have discussed before, are varied in appearance and power, but for a long time the Garu assumed at least one thing. They were all servants of the Wyrm, for it was Wyrm spirits that chose to possess. Yet this belief is fundamentally wrong. Both spirits of the Weaver and of the Wild are capable of this feat. The difference is that they are rarer, and that the process is done differently. A mortal possessed by a Weaver spirit is called a drone. As the name entails, they are far less autonomous and individual than the Fomori, each one created with a specific purpose and task in mind. This, of course, is because the Weaver does not condone independence. Indeed, no Weaver spirit ever chooses to merge with a human, but is instead merely a component in a recipe, used as material for the spiritual part of the transformation. Drones operate in ways that are difficult for anyone to follow or comprehend. Their path is set out for them and their directives are clear, but practically indecipherable to anyone who is not intimately familiar with the workings of the Weaver. A drone may appear in a moment of crisis to help a pack of Garu deal with a powerful foe, only to then turn on them without any explanation, utterly intent on their destruction. They can be close allies, providing crucial information on an endron facility's structural weak points and staff schedules, or merciless foes that cannot be reasoned or bargained with, that don't feel pity or remorse or fear, and that will absolutely not stop, ever, until their targets are dead. To make matters worse, drones are rarely, if ever, distinguishable from normal humans. Sure, they may have the stench of the weaver on them, a smell of sterile heated plastic of antiseptics and a touch of ozone, but then so too do many normal humans in a city. They lack physical visible mutations, and they operate with such efficiency and control that it is almost impossible to perceive them. Like microchips in a computer, they operate with utmost efficiency within their perimeters, performing their duties unquestioningly. They are utterly loyal to their task, bordering on fanaticism, and while they may have some manner of free will within them, that will is unbendingly focused on their mission. They want what they are, so perhaps that will is not free to begin with. Unsurprisingly, the Glasswalkers are the Guru who are the most knowledgeable about thrones. They ought to be, because they operate in those echelons of the urban environment where they would run into them most often. It is after all far more likely for a drone to be a hacker, a boardroom executive or even an urban courier than they would be a logger or an oil drill operator. The weaver is quite knowledgeable about the workings of modern society and she employs her servants accordingly. Where a fumori may be created because someone had one too many weirm infused beers, you will never find a drone fumbling about in the dark woods at night. The Glasswalkers try to compile information about this enemy, but naturally much of what they know and assume is deduction based. Again, unlike the Fomori, who may resent their lot in life, drones would never betray their masters simply out of spite. Unless, of course, that was the plan in order to achieve a further long term goal. The One Song is a phenomenon that, again, mostly the Glasswalkers are aware of. It is an undercurrent throughout civilization, unheard by most, yet always present. It is like a language in itself, a steady rhythm of music yet without words. It is a definite pattern, beautiful and ethereal. It is seductive, yet it lacks any warmth, compassion or love. And all drones are, in some way or another, connected to it. Mortals who can hear the one song are those close to becoming possessed by a weaver spirit. Humans will approach the one song when they are in a state of mind that is adjacent to it. Perfection through logic, Mathematics, code, and engineering can bring this near trance-like state where the mind is open to the beautiful symmetry that is the weaver. Flawless and unstained by messy chaos and reality, it is reassuring and inspiring. Order, structure, and efficiency floods the mind of the would-be drone, and they cross the gauntlet. And then, in a process known as clarification, they are merged with a weaver spirit picked for them. Their bodies are cleansed of impurities, uncertainties, and errors. The body is made into the ideal version, in the weaver's eyes of course, of what it should be. It is not inhuman by any standards, a drone looks more or less how they used to, but their complete lack of flaws and imperfections has permanently severed them from their nature. One might even argue that they are no longer alive. 
The reason for this lack of change is of course because it would make the drones work more difficult should they change. If they suddenly became more beautiful, it would cause disruption in their workflow, and may even expose them for what they are. This is the reason why many septs do not even believe that there are such things as drones, because they have simply never encountered any that they were aware of. Unfortunately, the weaver simply can't help it and, as mentioned, some flaws are simply too abhorrent to remain. The body will become more symmetrical, small blemishes and scars are removed, tattoos may disappear, and the body is no longer susceptible to diseases or foreign bacteria. Their senses are enhanced to the point where they will no longer require any aids they might have previously used, and their regenerative abilities keep the body locked in a complete stasis. They do not age, grow hair, or gain or lose weight. In a sense, they are now quite like vampires, another factor that might catch the Garou off guard. Mentally, a drone likewise becomes an object of structure and order. They rearrange their environments for maximum efficiency and follow incredibly tightly regimented schedules and regimes. They will go to great lengths to remain in control of a situation and will find it highly intolerable when elements of unpredictability is brought into their lives. They do not commit crimes that directly disrupt order and are highly efficient at their day jobs as well, punctual and precise in all of their undertakings. All weaver creatures, including drones, are deeply connected to a form of thought sphere where they are capable of immediately transferring information to other spirits nearby them, including sending out calls for help. This might not always be responded to, of course, as these weaver beings will evaluate the priority of this call. Should they be performing a duty more important than helping the drone out, whether or not this is objectively true, they will simply relay the message further away and go about their business. On the other hand, higher ranking spirits may actually actively invade a drone's mind and assume control of their actions, forcing the drone to comply with their wishes directly. Some drones may be able to fight this off momentarily, but this usually only happens when something that was highly important to them before their clarification is threatened. As mentioned before, drones have a regenerative power and it rivals and sometimes even surpasses that of the Garou. The weaver spirit in possession is capable of remarkable feats of repair, and even the most gruesome wounds can be restored within a couple of days. Drones' powers are varied and surprisingly difficult to categorize. Some are able to control the electronics with but a touch, others are able to raise the strength of the gauntlet locally, or perform feats of superhuman strength. Some Garou have even found that the drones may discharge electricity or alter the material compositions of objects around them, and as unlike the Fomori, the drones do not visually show what their powers may be, werewolves are often left guessing as to what they may be facing. Since weaver spirits do not embody anything remotely human, that is, they are not spirits of emotions or states of being, it is incredibly difficult to predict what they may be capable of, or what might be the drones' weakness. Perhaps most frightening is the fact that few creatures are immune to the process of clarification. It is not unheard of for a guru to walk the path of the one song and eventually find themselves modified to become loyal, unquestioning servants of the weaver. They may lose their ability to transform during this, depending on what the weaver desires, but that does not make them any less dangerous. It is not known why the weaver would desire a guru drone, other than perhaps for infiltration and suppression of particularly troublesome septs, or perhaps to further effect device such a sept, but regardless of her motivations, this is a fate that all Garou, especially Glasswalkers, must be wary of. Their Thurges are all able to sense the one song to some degree, and if they are not careful, they may eventually find themselves agreeing to alterations to their forms that completely disconnect them from Gaia. It is of course important to remember that the Weaver's agenda is not necessarily nefarious. She simply has a desired plan for the world, and that will always take precedence. She does not necessarily carry a grudge or lash out in anger, and thus, as we mentioned before, some drones are outright helpful to those Garou who they encounter. It all depends on the greater plan and what the weaver tasked that particular drone with. Yet one must always make sure not to trust them explicitly. Their allegiances lies with the weaver's agenda, and that may have them aid the local sept for quite a while, until they arrive at the part of the plan where they need to remove these Garou from the equation. And when that happens, there is no bartering with them. Weaver spirits do not think or work in any way like living creatures do. In a sense, they are far more simple and operate much more like pieces of software than an actual thinking, living creature. Turning a human into a drone is essentially stripping it of everything that made it alive, 
emotions, instincts and the like are all polished away as much as possible, leaving the host a haunting shell of what it once was. Even more frightening is the fact that unlike a fomori, from which a spirit may be exercised, although often at the cost of the host's life, the drone is unable to be separated from the spirit until it is killed, despite the seemingly smaller changes done to its body. There are those Garou who still hold out hope that the process can be reversed, that the human spirit cannot be so utterly dominated, and perhaps they are right, but we have yet to see a single situation where this has come true. While the worm threatens, tortures, and entices its servants, the weaver will instead mercilessly brainwash them until they are nothing more than an extension of her will. While a fomori may turn on their own kind, either for selfish reasons or simply because it is in their nature, there are no records of drones ever operating in opposition of each other. They may have separate goals, but to assume that the weaver would so clumsily have their objectives oppose each other is to give her too little credit. This video was brought to you by my patron the Antediluvian Procyon, who after the video on the Fomori wish to learn more about these spiritual hosts. I hope it was to your liking my friend, and thank you once again for your support.